Okay, now we're doing lesson 39, book three, beginning rock guitar. And this is a theory lesson called Harmony in Thirds. And this is a really important step beyond just playing the major scales. Now we're gonna harmonize the scale in thirds like this. Okay, and uh, with the regular major scale, if you remember from the second book, started with the second finger. If you don't remember that you might review that and we we did it in all the sharp keys and all the flat keys and we talked about tetrachords now tetrachords are each half of the scale if you think of the scale with the octave uh, really a scale a major scale is seven notes but um, with the octave you've got four on each side so it's very symmetrical and the tetrachords are exactly symmetrical. A tetrachord is the first four notes starting on the tonic, so I call it the tonic tetrachord, and it's fingers one, three, shift three a whole step, and then add the pinky for the half step. So it's the tonic, and then you go a whole step, whole step, half step. And then the dominant tetrachord just falls right in where the first finger would go to the next string, fifth fret of the fourth string, and it's uh, the same exact pattern. Um, so that's the dominant note, G, and then A is a whole step, and then a whole step to B, a half step to the octave C. So if you put them both together, you have a major scale, but you can see the two halves of the scale on the uh, two strings. Now, there is an extra whole step when you finish the first tetrachord and then go to the first note of the dominant tetrachord in G, uh, there's a whole, that's a whole step when you change strings. So there is an extra whole step. We're not gonna worry about it though because we're just looking within each tetrachord and seeing that it's like a symmetrical pattern. It's like two bricks. If you know they're identical and one can replace the other you can move them around. That's the way it works. So um, C, D, E, F, and then G, A, B, C. And you should also go down the scale. Now, the third finger is the only thing I'm shifting. So when you go up the tetrachord, you're going one, three, three, four. And when you go down the tetrachord, sorry, you go four, three, three, one. Don't go four, three, one, one. I see a lot of students doing that. So they're doing two different fingerings. They're shifting the third finger going up and then shifting the first finger going down. And it's just a tendency, I think, that, um, but I would not do that. That sounds picky, but uh, you wanna do the same fingering going up and the same fingering going down. So just shift the third finger. And musically, guitar-wise, if you're doing licks, often you're, you're gonna shift that more than you would the first two notes anyway. So um, it's more practical, all right? Now, what are thirds? That was a scale. What, what are these thirds? If we skip a note of the scale, like instead of going from C to D, and we go C to E, that's a third. And that's two whole steps from C to E. You can see the, you know, that whole step we didn't play is D. So that's two whole steps. And then uh, if I start, go to D, and I skip E and go to F, it's D, F, and you can see it's a step and a half because we have that half step between E and F. That's a minor third. So the first one, C to E, two whole steps, is a major third. And then D to F is a minor third. And it's, um, it, can you hear the song? You know, <laughs> like if you've ever seen uh, The Sound of Music uh, with uh, Julie Andrews, I think it's, uh, 
Doe a deer, a female deer, ray a ray of golden sun. I think that's right, but I don't know the whole song, but and I'm not going to sing it. But uh, that's a good way to remember the sound of it. Uh, this is a major third, and this is a minor third uh, from D to F. And then if you went uh, E to G, that's a minor third because you have that half step from E to F and then a whole step to the G. And then F to uh, A is a, is a major third because it's two whole steps. You know, and and um, so you could, you know, if you, you don't remember that song, go watch The Sound of Music, okay? Now, um, but we're not going to play them like this. You could. That's a good way to practice them and see the intervals. You can see the, the differences between the major and minor thirds. But we're going to play them as chords, like a pair of strings, a dyad, they call it, when you have two strings as a chord. And uh, this is a major third, then a minor third, minor third, and major third. So that's the first tetrachord in C. And the major third I'm fingering with two and one, and then three and one for the minor third, and then the exact same fingering, three and one for the next minor third. And then I'm going to go two, uh, I'm sorry, three and two instead of two and one because it just, you can just shift your third finger from E to F and it fits like that. Plus, this, will, this fingering will help us go to the next tetrachord. So I don't want to talk about that right now, but the first tetrachord, I would get to know this pattern of chords and the shapes, only two shapes and then go back down and just get to know it to where you can do it fairly smoothly, fairly easily. This is um, a little bit difficult because you have to shift to every note. Excuse me. <coughs> uh, dry throat here. But um, when we get to the end of the first tetrachord, now, this fingering helps us get to the next tetrachord because we take the third finger off, shift your second finger this way, two frets, to the fifth fret, and then add the first finger on the third string. And so we're moving across the street to the next set of strings, pair of strings, and doing the exact same pattern. So once you know the first pattern, you can do the second pattern. And it's fingers two and one, three and one, three and one, three and two, and then back down. Okay? And then you want to put do the whole scale, put them together, the two tetrachords. practice these in the beginning, uh, we want to review what a tetrachord is. So play the tetrachord, what we call the first tetrachord is, I call it, I think a better term would be the tonic tetrachord because C is the tonic of the key of C. And that's what we're doing, the key of C major. So do the tetrachord up and back and then practice the thirds up and back. To the dominant note, G is the a fifth away from C, like a root fifth chord. That's a fifth away, and that's called the dominant. Actually, every tone of the major scale has a name, like you have the tonic, the supertonic, the median. Uh, I'm not going to get into that, but the the main ones you need to know are the tonic and the dominant. So getting back to the way to practice it, again, let's review. You practice the first tetrachord, the tonic tetrachord, just the single notes. 
and then harmonize that in thirds. Then go to the dominant G and play that tetrachord single notes and then harmonize that in thirds. Then I would do single notes, both tetrachords. the whole scale in thirds. And one takeaway that you want to really remember, not only know this pattern of thirds and how to play them, but know what you're playing. You're playing major, minor, minor, major. That's the pattern of the tetrachord. Major, minor, minor, major. And then the other tetrachord is the same exact thing. Major, minor, minor, major. So it's the whole scale is major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, minor, major. Okay? Um, when you play the scale, though, when you get to the high note, I wouldn't stop and start over again. I would just go um, and then go like you're going over a hill. That's the way we play scales, like when we do the, the one that we learned in the second book. You go to the high note and it's like going over a hill, coming back down. You don't want to do it in two halves like stop, take a break. Yeah. Again, that's a picky thing, but that's generally how uh, classical pianists and violinists do scales. Um, so it's it's just it's kind of uh, you know the a well played scale is a beautiful thing. Uh, for me at least, you know, and for a lot of people too, but uh, <laughs> some people like my mother, uh, you know, I'm getting personal here, but my mother uh, said, I, I like hearing you practice. I just don't like those scales. <laughs> so, and I practiced a lot of them when I was a teenager. Uh, I was doing classical guitar lessons and just doing them slowly and fast and all kinds of ways. But um, now, once you get to know this pattern, try um, being creative with it and uh, make up a little melody and right. you hear that all the time in uh, country music. Uh, uh, a lot of uh, Mexican music, like uh, Tex-Mex or Mariachi, you'll hear. <laughs> Harmony and thirds just everywhere, you know, and it's, it's uh, really, you know, the main thing, difference between our Western music or European-influenced music is harmony compared to other like Middle Eastern music or classical music of India. Often, you know, in those kind of musics, you have a, a drone. And and it's not so harmony, so much harmony. And, and um, uh, pentatonic scales that we learn for blues are not scales that you can do harmony. You can't do major thirds and minor thirds. You can do a little bit of that. There is a major third and a minor third between some of the notes, but you can't harmonize it like you can a major scale. Okay, so um, that's the main difference between uh, different cultures of music. Our European culture is very harmony based, and that's what um, um, that's why it's good to study music theory enough to where you understand all of that. And you can see it's a, it's a pattern on the guitar. 
-hmm. it's not as easy to see the patterns on a piano, especially if you do different keys. Like on guitar, I could move this whole thing up a uh, whole step, and now I've got the key of D. Same exact pattern, just moved up, up a whole step, or if I move it across the street to A, which A is on the fifth fret of the sixth string, I can do the same pattern. And that works on all the strings tuned in fourths to be the, the exact same finger patterns. The only exception is that when you go to doing a tetrachord on the third string, the third and second strings are tuned to a major third. They're tuned a half step smaller. So the, the shapes are different. A major is straight across. A minor is what a major looked like on the other pair of strings. And that's minor and then major. Here I'm playing it with third and fourth fingers. And then here I'm barring the major third. So it's major third, minor third, minor third, major third. So you might try that pattern. Like if you did the key of G starting on the fourth string, you would have the exact same pattern that we just studied, major, minor, minor, major, and then you'd go to a bar major, and then two and three, fingers two and three, minor, minor, and then fingers three and four, major. See? So I, I wouldn't worry about that right now so much, but if you want to play with that, that gives you the complete picture. If you're doing the first two strings, it's just like what we did in here. So if I did the key of E right here, see, and often you do that on the first. It almost sounds like country harmony or Tex-Mex, you know, kind of things. You hear that in a lot of songs, even the the guitars, you might do an intro like that, you know. And um, so what we're going to do next after this, I'll give you a riff that has these patterns of thirds in the key of E. That's the next lesson. And then we'll do harmony when we invert a third, which um, that means that we put the, the lowest note up an octave. Then we have what we call sixths. So if you invert a third, it becomes a sixth. And sixth harmonies are basically just like thirds, except the root is now on top. Okay, but we'll get into that in the... Um, so that would be two lessons from now, and then I'll do a riff that has sixths in it. But sixths are used a lot in lead guitar. Very pretty sounding and uh, very convenient. See? So um, it's a different, actually most lead guitars probably use sixths more than they use thirds. But that's, it's, it's just a matter of preference and taste, right? So, um, Hopefully you got something out of this lesson. Uh, it's very important to be able to harmonize and understand the pattern of major, minor, minor, major. That's the one big takeaway is that you're doing major, minor, minor, major and understanding that pattern. And then the other tetrachord, the dominant tetrachord is also major, minor, minor, major in the exact same pattern. And um, that it, that then it becomes very easy once you get that under your fingers, okay? So um, please comment and uh, like this video if you got something out of it. And subscribe. Uh, John Hedger Guitar Studio. I'm also on Facebook and Instagram, okay? So I'll see you in the next one. All right.